Good morning and welcome to a week in my life as a content creator living in New York City where I will be sharing all the fancy events that I get to attend, all the lows of this job and also the behind the scenes and everything in between. So buckle up. As I am getting ready, I thought it would be a good idea to talk a bit about what you have just seen but also about how that event connects to my whole job as a content creator. I think that if you have ever wondered what working as a full-time content creator is really like or if you're thinking about getting yourself into this industry, you're going to find this video very, very useful. I will be getting ready as usual and all the products that I'll be using will show up on the screen so I don't interrupt anything that I'm saying, so stay tuned for that. So as you just saw, I had the chance to attend a very special event at Connie. Connie is an actual plane that was grounded a few years ago and is now a bar at the TW Hotel in JFK. So iconic location, check, of course. And not only the location was iconic, but also the event itself. I was at the launch event for Liam Moriarty's new book called Here One Moment. And if you know me, and if you have been watching my book recommendations videos, you know that I read a lot of books by Liam Moriarty. She's probably the author I read the most books or should be tied with someone else. And I've loved so many of her books over the years. And getting to attend a book launch event for her new book, and also getting to meet Liam Moriarty was honestly a one in a lifetime experience for me and I had so so much fun it was great being in an environment with other book creators either bookstagram or book talk people that do vlogs it was a mix of everything but being there with so many people that love talking about books I love that so this event looks fancy and it was <laughs> fancy it was a really nice event but something that I wanted to share about my job is that not all days are like that. Days can be quite different and that so many times we really are just creating content for the sake of it. So to put this into context, a few months ago I was talking with my grandfather who asked me exactly what is my job? What do you do every day? What is exactly your role? Which I totally get because he just turned 90 and to be completely honest I think for the first 80 years of his life there was no such thing as content creators or influencers and I think there was like not even like internet for most of his life so it was a very very fair question but I thought it was also good to share with maybe other people that are wondering the same thing asking the same questions and really thinking what do these people do all day or how do we get paid or is everything we post an ad or is it not so I'm here to answer all of those questions so I would say that most days like for example today with this video that I'm filming and with the videos that I will be filming after I finish doing my makeup, all those videos, I do it just for the sake of creating videos. You'll see that on my channel. I have over 140 videos and of those, I would say that over half of them, I am just creating content.
content for the sake of creating content. Meaning that I am talking about books that I've read and that I liked. I'm talking about tips for learning a new language, tips for getting organized when working from home. I'm talking about how to start a vlog. I'm talking about different neighborhoods in New York City. And I'm doing all these things and going to all these places really just out of my own desire to shoot, to film, to create. Because there's no one really sponsoring any of those videos. No one really asking me to create that specific content. It's really just me out there with a camera and with an idea. But what those videos do and videos on YouTube, posts on Instagram, Instagram stories, TikTok, whatever, all of them serve as a portfolio. You are basically showing what type of content you like creating, what type of content you're good at, what's the quality of your content. Are you good at video editing or do you take great photos? And what you are basically is presenting every day to potential brands, to potential agencies that would want to work with you at some point point in the future. So in this case, for example, I posted to my YouTube channel a total of 16, if I'm not mistaken, videos with book recommendations. And about a year ago or so, I got in touch with an editorial. They started sending me advanced reader copies of their books and noticing that I liked those books, that I talked about those books, that I have posted so many videos on my YouTube channel, they decided to reach out to me and offer me this paid collaboration with them. As you probably saw on my Instagram, I went to this event very happily, but also it was a paid partnership. I was working with the editorial to promote the launch of Leah Moriarty's new book and very happy to do so. And really what I think is that they decided to work with me because they saw that I genuinely like reading books, that I have reviewed so many of Leah Moriarty's books already out of my own will, and they like the type of content that I created they thought I aligned with their brand, with their publishing house, with their authors, and they decided to work with me on a paid campaign. And what I mean by all this is that being a content creator can sometimes be so fun, so rewarding. It can feel so luxurious, you know, like a normal evening in your life is being at a fancy cocktail bar meeting your favorite author. But it does have this mix of things where there are some days where you're basically posting videos just because you want to because even with AdSense in my channel being a small channel I basically get like a very small amount of money per video if you have watched my what I earn in a year for AdSense videos you know if not they will be linked up here you can go ahead and watch them so in response to my grandfather and also to maybe some of you watching creating content is a mix of all that so many days of your life you are just putting content out there with the idea to inspire, to inform, to educate people, to share your interests, to share your values, to share your ideas. In my case, it might be an outfit idea, what I wore for fashion week, get you inspiration for fall fashion as I did in my last video. I might be posting where to eat in New York City in all of my summer series, which bookstores to visit. I can also be talking about the books that I read and that I like and that I think that you should read as well. And most of those videos, if not sometimes all of them, are just things that I think create edit post and there's really no sponsor no anything behind it just me wanting to do them And then after doing this, sometimes these opportunities come to you or you get to pitch yourself to brands or to agencies and you get to work in so many cool and amazing projects. But it's like a roller coaster, you know, you have all these highs and also all these lows, all these times where you may be wondering where your next paycheck is coming from, where you might be wondering if all the effort you're putting out there to create a video or two is really worth it. So I don't know, I'm perfectly aware that there are lots of harder and tougher jobs in the world. I know I am very privileged in that sense. I am very, very aware of that. But I also know that unlike some other jobs where you always know how much you're getting paid or when your next paycheck is coming, this is a type of job that does not guarantee you that and that you can have your good days and your bad days and good months and bad months. And you need to be smart and you need to be able to plan ahead to always 
always be thinking of new ideas, new concepts, new people, new brands to pitch yourself to. So those are like my two cents of, I would say the highs, the lows, and the behind the scenes of being a creator. If you wanna know more about this, I actually did a whole video about how much money I earn as a content creator. It will be linked down below in the description box. And right after that one, I also did another video with a Q and A because after I posted it, so many people sent in so many questions. So I wanted to also answer those. It will also be linked down below in the description box if you wanna know some more. And the reason why I wanted to film on this week is because I think it's going to be a very fun week. I had this event to get started, but also today I'm filming for YouTube some videos that you will be seeing in the next few weeks or few months. Since we are traveling in a week, I wanna try to get ahead with filming and be ready and have content ready to edit. And tomorrow we are going to a Broadway show. They invited me and then I have a dinner on Thursday for another launch event. So I feel like it, this is a very, I would say typical week in my life as a content creator in New York City. And I wanted to take you along with me on this. If you have any questions about anything that I've talked about, I will be linking all the videos where I talk more about my job and how I earn money down below. But if you see that there's still some things that I have never talked about, I'm really happy to film a video some other time. So definitely let me know that. And you'll see me next with my makeup all done and filming for YouTube. I was about to start filming my other video, which is why I'm in my makeup and all dressed up. And I realized I never properly introduced myself. So that was kind of rude. I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Floor. I live and work here in New York City. And on this channel, I post content around life in the city, my life as a new mom. I also talk about the things that I love, like reading books. And I also share about the behind the scenes of being a content creator, as you have probably guessed from the last 10 minutes or so. If you're new and you still haven't subscribed, go ahead hit the subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell so you can go ahead and get notified of every time I upload a new video. And if you have already subscribed and you have already watched some of my videos, thank you so much for coming back. I am now going to switch over to this camera to show you some of the behind the scenes of this video that you're going to see on the channel in about a week. I had to take a few moments to regroup myself because there was some tears involved. But I'm here to talk about the play that we just saw called Our Town by Thornton Wilders. So first of all, this show is not officially open yet. I think if I'm not mistaken, it's opening on October 7. And we were at a preview. A preview is a number of shows before the actual opening date in which the producers, stage managers, people working behind the scenes are still adjusting the last few details, seeing how the audience reacts seeing how everything looks on stage before everything is like basically like set in stone when the show officially opens i was invited by the production which i am super thankful for and so happy and i wanted to talk a bit about this story our town is a story about a town you guessed it it's a town in new hampshire hampshire I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And what's special about this play in particular is that there's basically no set. 
you know that you might go to lots of place and there's like a huge background and the music and the stage moves and special effects and lights and stuff no this is not the case the stage is like very neutral very like black and white you have a stage manager which is the character that Jim Parsons from the Big Man Theory plays and this person basically explains what we are supposed to be imagining he's like oh you have Main Street here and there's a bank here and there is a town hall and you can find a pharmacy over here which reminded me a lot of reading a book you know where you are supposed to imagine a lot of things because you're not actually seeing them and you have to picture how things would look like how people would look like and I really love that and this story has three acts the first one is basically a description of the town to get to know what people do on their day-to-day -day life how they wake up they make breakfast they go to school they go to work they come back then on act two we see how people fall in love and they get married and they talk a lot about how in a way we as humans are supposed to go through life in pairs and that's why a lot of people get married and then in act three we experience a very natural I would say an obvious human experience which is death so personally I really liked it I feel like act one is more like the setting and trying to understand the characters and the town and life and what's going on act number two felt a lot shorter which is basically people getting married and then act three when someone dies is where I started crying because I think it makes you question a lot about our own lives our own mortality and how much or how little we sometimes appreciate those little moments that end up being like a whole chunk of our lives you know like waking up having a meal regrouping after a day of work or just like seeing your loved ones looking at them in the eyes seeing their faces and it got me very very emotional at that point but it's a play that I would recommend to anyone who wants to experience I would say something different if it's your first time watching something on Broadway I'm sure something that's more flashy, you know, like more songs and more lights and music and stuff would probably be more up your alley. And I'm guilty of this as well. Like my first show on Broadway was The Lion King a few years ago. And still to this day, I think it's probably the best first show for someone to go to. And I really enjoy Aladdin as well, also Hamilton. And I was kind of scared and stressed going into this play because English not being my first language and not really knowing what this story was about, except for the fact that it was about a town. I was like, oh my God, am I going to understand what people are saying? Am I going to understand the story? Am I going to get the jokes? And I'm happy to say that I did. I understood the story. I understood basically everything and I liked it. And if you are someone that enjoys plays, more plays than musical, then I think it's something that you should definitely should go see on Broadway now while it's still doing the previews or in October when it officially opens. Now I am heading off to another event which is a holiday preview of an agency of some of the brands that they work with and the products that they offer for the holiday season and then after that I am going home for some family time and some work time and we'll talk again tomorrow. to be if i'm unable to make you happy then it's for the better that you are not
Good morning. It is now Friday and my main task today is to work on the edit of this video that you are seeing right now and also filming this clip. And this is actually the first time that I'm actually filming and editing almost at the same time. This has never happened before, probably because I have never filmed an actual week in my life before. But this time around, I knew that I could not wait until the last day to edit everything. So I've started editing Monday and Tuesday, still need to work on Wednesday, Thursday and this clip from Friday because I intend for this video to go live tomorrow, Saturday. So I really need to work on it. But I'm so far having a lot of fun and I think it's a different video that I've always wanted to do and I never did. But here we are, we're finally doing it and I hope you're enjoying it as well. And I would love to know your thoughts and if you want me to do more Week in My Life videos in the future. And what I wanted to do also was talk about the last two events that you saw, the one on Wednesday evening and the one on Thursday night night and how they are similar and different at the same time. So the event on Wednesday, this was a holiday gifting suite. So this type of events usually happen around the holidays. I know that we're still in September, but for brands, we're almost there. And sometimes they also happen around the new season. So for example, when fall winter is just getting started or when spring summer is getting started. And sometimes they also happen around New Year Fashion Week. So these events are organized by PR agencies and what they do is that they bring together all the brands or most of the brands that they work with and they allow these brands to have like the little setups where you get to talk to these brands. In this case, they had different products that they were offering for the holiday season. So for example, you have candles, which are great gifts for the holiday season. There were also two stands for clothes and two for shoes. Again, perfect for gifting, but also pieces that you might wanna wear to a holiday party or that you might wanna wear at home or outside when we are in this colder month. And a huge perk about an event like this one is that all of these brands offer the opportunity to gift some of the products to you. In the case of the candles, we could pick one right then and there. But then on the other cases, you either had like Google Forms that you could complete and pick some of their pieces, the shoes that you want and the size that you want. Same with clothes and stuff. And I know that's a big, big perk of our job. And I am very aware of how privileged I am in that sense. I think I've mentioned that before in this video like multiple times. But what this type of events are, are not only for you to get something as a gift, but also to help you build relationships with the brands. You get to know the actual people behind the brand, sometimes the founders, sometimes the PR team that works for the brand. But what is so amazing is that if you want to build relationships with the brands, if you want to maybe work in a paid campaign in the future with some of these brands, you need to get to know the people behind the brands. I always say this and I'll say it again, but brands, the brands that you dream of, the brands that you really, really want to work with, in the end, there's an actual real human being behind that brand. And this actual real human being decides who gets to do a paid campaign and who doesn't, who gets to do a gifting campaign and who doesn't. And in the end, it's about creating those relationships with those actual real human beings like you and me and getting to know them, getting to interact with them, getting to introduce yourself, to share about your content, your lifestyle, the things you do, the things you love creating, and really making connections, building relationships with these people. And that is a very, very important part of our jobs and of this industry. Relationships, people, and how you present yourself, how you show up, when you show up, and how you behave, all of that is very important. Your reputation as a whole is a big, big part of your job. It's a big part of the type of jobs that you get, that you don't, and how you can move forward in a way in your career as a creator. And the event last night, it was similar, but at the same time, a bit different. What I liked about it is that it was a seated dinner. And those type of events are events that lately I'm favoring. I really love when the brands take the time, the effort, and I know the money that it means to set up a dinner like this in a beautiful restaurant around on Cornelia Street on the West Village. Gorgeous. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why I said, yes, I'm going. I would love to be there. And this is a brand that has different clinics around the city. They do aesthetic treatments. So they do facials, they do injections. And they wanted us to meet the team behind the brand, some of the people working at the clinics. And it was a really great opportunity to meet, to chat in this beautiful setting, this beautiful space. And I also was lucky enough 
love that I got to sit next to Gillian. She is someone that I've been following for about a year or year and a half, but we've never met in real life. And we chatted the whole dinner. She's also a mom, lives in the city, has kids around the same age as Julia. Also, we are the same exact age. So I love when I get to really chat and connect with people. I feel like with events like the gifting suite, for example, where there's a whole lot more people and you're standing and moving around, maybe you get this few couple of minutes to talk with people. But when you get an actual dinner and you're there for three hours, you really get to connect on a deeper level. And I love that. And I feel like every event has its highlights and the things that you like more about one or the other. Sometimes being able to be at a city dinner means that you need to make arrangements in your personal life because you're supposed to be there for three hours plus commute. So it's like four hours or so. And I know that maybe not everyone can do that. Certainly I cannot do that every single night. And then you get these other events where you maybe don't get to connect with people for like a really long period of time, but also allow you to maybe be in and out of the event in like 30 minutes or 40 minutes and maybe do something else after whether that's work or personal life. But all in all, I think it's again about those human connections, about those personal relationships you build that we build with the PR agencies that we build with the brands that we build with other creators. And it's very important to know that every single day, every single event that you go to, you are not only putting yourself out there, but really building on your reputation and the type of person that you are, how you want to be perceived and how you also do after those events. Like, do you post about them? Do you share about them? Do you talk about the brands? Because with gifting or with this type of events, maybe sometimes brands don't expect you to share about the dinner or share about the gifting suite. But if you do, there's certainly someone, again, an actual human being on the other side that's happy because they spent money and time and effort into those events and their jobs and part of their tasks are for this brands to get more recognition, to get more awareness. So I feel like that's all I have to share about these events. I feel like this week had really a mix of everything, like a cocktail vibe with an event and a paid partnership on the side, also a day of filming at home, also a Broadway show, a gifting suite, a dinner event, and now a full day of editing with like no makeup and regular at home clothes. But I hope you liked it, hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. I think that I really pushed myself when filming this video and trying to do something different, something I haven't done before and try to get creative and show you, I'm not saying something that you don't see on YouTube, but something that you have certainly not seen on my channel before. So if you like this video, please let me know that down below in the comments, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. I will leave the links to all the people that I met, the events that I went to, the brands, the Broadway show, the clothes I was wearing, like literally everything will be down below in the description box in case there's something that I didn't include, like a username or a tag here and there. And if there's still something missing or if you have any extra questions about my job, about this video or about anything, you can also leave that down below in the comments. Happy to answer that or maybe do another video if needed. And thank you so much for watching. Really hope you like this video. And as I usually say, I will see you on the next one. Bye.